Shrihan Mai ji and uh, the entire team at uh, iHub for driving this fantastic uh, initiative for the startup community, especially the student community who we see as the next gen uh, folks who are going to take on the mantle of not only the nation but the globe as well. So thank you so much uh, for doing this. Uh, you know, I would just try to rewind my own uh, journey to uh, share a snapshot of where I have come from and give a context to the audience today. So when I finished my graduation, uh, I was at crossroads. Uh, just like anybody else, I was also you know, put through many rounds of placement and I had a couple of offers from some of the multinationals and some of the startups. Uh, for whatever reason at that point of time when startups was not even a buzzword, it was a very gut instinct to go and join the startup. The sole reason being that the technologies that they were working at that point of time was super exciting. So that was the buzzword then, you know, when we had the very first mobile phones, the Nokia 3000 series, which is, you know, very uh, commonly known as the brick that would not break even when you threw it down from a second floor or a third floor. It was so strong. So that was the buzzword then. And uh, the technology that this startup was working on was uh, building the um, 3G and the 4Gs of the world. So it was pretty, uh, you know, as a student, uh, uh, I was very keen to go and explore into a new area of technology. And it was a matter of not only luck, but a lot of hard work and persistence that at some point this startup was acquired by one of the giants, Cisco, which is you know, uh, the reason I'm part of Cisco today, being part of that, being there, done that journey, uh, seen through zero to you know, hundreds of customers, which are the tier one telecom customers around the world. It's a, it's a very fascinating uh, journey that I really appreciate the learning curve that one gets to uh, obtain being part of the startup ecosystem. And fast forward today uh, to where we stand in here, you know, students are no longer at crossroads. When we look at opportunities of uh, a startup versus a multinational, you know, I think the students are mo far more forthcoming to look at some of the uh, opportunities coming in from these startups, especially because of the agility uh, that these startups bring in. But this is where uh, corporates are coming in to kind of uh, take a stand and say, hey, you know, why don't we get together the agility of these startups plus the stability of corporates? Thereby, you get the best of both worlds. So uh, being at the intersection, being at the epicenter of both the startup's agility plus the corporate stability places us accelerator at a very good vantage point because we are able to drive not only uh, meaningful opportunities for the student community, the you know people who are joining on, but also for the communities, you know, for, for the outcomes for the communities that we are part of, we are able to drive digitization in a very meaningful manner by engaging with the startups on all possible applications on digitization. We at uh, Cisco Launchpad typically work on three pillars. The first one being enterprise tech, which is the whole gamut of uh, collaboration, security, uh, networking, to name a few. And then the second pillar is all about driving IoT and digitization in various forms and factors like uh, uh, healthcare, retail, aviation, etc. And then the third pillar is around futuristic technology where we work on some of the cutting edge work that comes out of research labs from the academia. And then we try to see how enterprises like ours can play a pivotal role for some of these futuristic tech. So on these three main pillars, our foundation is laid to be able to work with the startup community, hand in hand with the startup community, creating a, a, a positive dent on all of the ecosystem, because this is not like a single man or a single woman show. We need to all collaborate, come together, the startup plus Cisco, plus the investment, plus the government bodies, plus the, you know, anybody else who's enabling this, it is important for all of us to join forces because together I believe we have the power to you know go above and beyond in you know, Atmanirbar in its truest form. 
uh, we are all responding uh, with full force and vigor to the you know vocal for local so uh, truly committed to joining forces with the startup ecosystem and the student community uh, from cisco very happy to be on here and extend our support so suti you you rightly mentioned that you started as an enterprise you started as a startup young startup right out of college just and then you know somehow uh, cisco uh, giants like cisco got you and then finally you are now giving back in terms of your experience from 0 to 100 customers and getting it right how was the situation like years i mean it might have happened uh, years before uh, what what was the factor of easiness for a startup like you to go to incorporate or the kind of challenges people like you used to face and when you look back to young startups comes to you how is the scenario now how do you see these two landscape what are changed so just a quick clarification there because uh, i was not the founder of that startup but i was one of the early employees of that startup so really saw it growing from scratch there uh, there are two different perspectives i want to share in here what has changed and what has not changed what has not changed definitely the outlook you know what you are creating for whom are you creating a customer first approach a technology first approach this is definitely not changed also the domestic versus a global scale are we selling to the local consumers or the global consumers uh, definitely starting with a global vision but a local ecosystem a beta ecosystem to test with so a combination a hybrid approach uh, definitely has not changed you know from then to now Uh, i strongly believe both is required a hybrid approach to uh, adopt uh, creating and deploying a solution is required very strongly required what has probably changed is the outlook of people uh, who are employees or potential employees of a startup they are no longer being looked like aliens you know people still think that it's it's now the cool thing the in thing to be part of startups which was not the case uh, a decade or you know even longer back uh, there you were actually betting your lives you were risking your lives the people who didn't uh, give you um, a marriage proposal if you were part of a startup they would think hey are you not in a stable job at all right you know that was the outlook at that point of time but i think that has definitely changed now and right from uh freshers out of college willing to sign up for startups to the government giving in so much of impetus to the startup ecosystem especially the very recent one during covid it was so heartening to see how the government placed a very big trust on the startup ecosystem and gave us all the opportunity to build uh different kinds of innovation right from what is required for healthcare to worker safety to a host of opportunities that was that were like thrown open uh, overnight so i think that trust definitely has changed a long way and i'm i'm sure this top down approach has turned the uh, light on it has flipped around the approach the way people are looking at it big time 